I'm gonna blast through. Um, so I work as an artist. I do different projects with projection, technology, tracking. Here I'm working with Daito Manabe, projecting on the face. Um, this is a project I collaborated with uh, a group of uh, four other artists and a, a sixth uh, member, a sixth artist named Tempt, and we um, worked together to build an, uh, a low-cost open source eye tracking system for him. There's some video of that in the Fat Lab show. Um, this is a, an instrument. If I work my way through the SFPC slides, I'll talk about this. This is a musical instrument that plays live radio from around the world. So when you press a note on the keyboard, it finds a note being played in a radio stream from somewhere else in the world. Um, doing all kinds of things, this collaboration with Golan Levin, making interactive tables, uh, projections. This is an early project. This is a project called Mesa de Voce, where we combine an overhead projector and a digital projector, creating a kind of hybrid light source. So mixing both analog and digital light. So I work as an artist, I also work as an educator, and recently have been involved in uh, co-founding the School for Poetic Computation. And before I was at SFPC, I was at a school called Parsons, Parsons School of Design. I'd been there for 10 years, you can see what my ID card looked like. Um, but I was seeing all of these things being in the university system. I was seeing all these things that I was uncomfortable with. So you were seeing like universities creating campuses in Dubai, you know, creating these huge buildings. Like, you know, this is what was happening in kind of higher education in the world that I was involved with. Um, and you started to see it also in New York. There were things like Cooper Union, which for a hundred years had been a free school. And because of mismanagement by the board, um, they had to charge t tuition now. So we started to think, you know, as with, with a group of friends started to think about, you know, wh what are alternatives? But, but besides the expensive, famous schools, what are the kind of alternative models for education? And could we make our own thing? And I was really inspired by my father. Um, he's right there with the, the cap on. And he created, a, in, he was an uh, English teacher, and he created this program called Senior Seminar, where he took seniors to farms and on road trips and like blindfolded them, dropped them in random places in Chicago that have to collect oral histories and work their way back home. And like he did all of these things. He created a school. And it was really kind of beautiful. Like I grew up around this idea that you could make your own school. Um, and you know, they let students play with saws and crazy things. Uh, my mom was a childbirth educator. She taught women how to, how to give birth. And so I was just also surrounded by babies. Um, and so I had this idea that like we, you, we could create a school, we could make a school, and um, we, so we came up with this idea. Um, it was myself and Jen Lo and Ami Pitaru and Taeyun Choi, and we called the school the School for Poetic Computation. Um, and we're based in New York. We like this idea of poetry, like celebrating poetry. And so if you go to a bookstore, this is St. Mark's Bookstore, um, you have to go all the way to the back of the bookstore, and that's where the poetry section is, right? It's not in the front of the bookstore, it's in the back of the bookstore. Because nobody's getting rich writing poems. They're, they're experiments, they're, um, you know, they're, uh, it's, it's this kind of like small um, corner of the bookstore. We wanted to create artwork and create a school that celebrated that, that place, the sort of spirit of poetry. Um, this is a really good kind of advertisement for why we chose the word poetry. This is the artist Jean Tingley. La cochonnerie a commencé avec Raphaël et c'est une peinture horrible. C'est la fin du magnifique art primitif italien. So he says the bullshit started with Raphael. The word art was invented in the middle of the Renaissance. Before then, the idea of art didn't exist. The Egyptians, the Indians, the Chinese, none of them had the concept of art. It was just people doing things. I love that his, his shirt says, more wheels. This concept was invented 350 years ago and it's been used as a scam. The word I like to use is poetry. 
A remarkable word which originally meant to live. So we love this idea of poetry, celebrating poetry. Like we have in our world, there's this term creative coder. Um, and we were thinking, you know, what, uh, what's an alternative word? Alternative word is a poet. Like instead of calling yourself a coder, could you call yourself a poet? Um, Golan sent me this video. Uh, Golan Levin sent me this video how the word demo is so easily rearranged to, to write the word poem. So we have this demo, demo or demo or die culture right around technology and could we create a poem poem culture we were inspired um and i mentioned these people i just wanted to show their photographs uh red burns we were inspired by red burns who created the itp program here she is like with a beta camera going out and doing her documentary filmmaking she's just amazing kind of source generally a source of inspiration for us um and when she passed away they made fortune cookies and the fortune cookie that I got is a quote from her, and it says that the poetry drives you, not hardware. Um, Carol Becker, who I also mentioned, is the dean of the Art School of Columbia. And again, she's, she is a fierce advocate for artists, and she suggests this idea of having artists at a table when important decisions are being made. And the school, as I mentioned, we're, we're really interested in asking questions. One of the things that we do on the application when people apply, we say, what do you want the school to be? And the school really is a reflection of that. It's a reflection of their answers. On the first day, we actually sit and write questions, like at individually and then as a group and collectively. And we wind up with this crazy list, this crazy, um, we, we come up almost with a taxonomy. And every semester, it's different. But it's this list of like philosophical questions and technical questions and meta questions. And, and some people are crazy. They just want to cross off every question. They want to get an answer. And some of these questions don't have answers. And you know that's, that's kind of what the school is about. Um, so much of the school is really driven by the people in the school. So a lot of it is like, although we plan classes, a lot of things happen spontaneously. And we use whiteboards and, and so on. Um, it's a school focused on, on computation and on numbers. And so, you know, uh, Oscar Schwartz, one of the participants, said, you know, instead of reading Kerouac, young poets should be reading Claude Shannon's Mathematical Theory of Communication. We're looking at code, at the language of code, the language of numbers, sometimes, you know, number, little bit crazy numbers. Um, but numbers have meaning. There's politics. There's, there's, there's something there. We want to figure out what, what, what is there and make artwork with it. Also software, like what's software about? How can we um, work with software? Um, and things like crea creative writing. Uh, Kenneth Gold, the poet Kenneth Goldsmith has this idea of uncreative writing. Of a, uh, he teaches a class where you're not allowed to write new words, but just take words that exist and rearrange them. And that, that, that this idea of taking language and coming up with a new ways of manipulating it, that's what inspires the school. Um, there's artworks that we also study in the school that inspire us. This is an amazing project, Elodie Lorraine, um, who's an artist, created this book called Vast. And this is a book where um, it's, it's created with text. It's computationally generated text, but there's no words. But it's a book that, that tells a story, and it's actually really beautiful. Like, we look at this, this kind of, like, as a, as a model of what computational poetry is about. It's a kind of understanding, manipulation, and play of language and code. Um, and we're trying to do things. We invite different artists to come in, people like Brian House, to talk about data visualization. Um, we do a lot of work using hands. So, um, you know, most people, when you think about computer programming, you think like laptop, screen, you know, classroom full of computers. And for us, it's about building and physical things, like really making computers from scratch, from wires, learning about you know, uh, logic gates and building half adders and adders and, and what are the roots of computation or thinking about binary numbers and using grapes and paper to understand them. You know, building, building things on paper, building things that you can touch with your hand. Um, and for us, that's like, there's a really kind of a beauty in that. Or if we're talking about image processing, like actually becoming the pixels and, and being in the room. We also, we do hardware, we do software, we also do theory. So we have Allison Birch is another teacher in the program. And she has a class about cr you know, cr uh, critical computation. And so we might be one week talking about critical engineering. Um, she's a member of the Deep Lab. And I just wanted to give a shout out because it's an amazing group of um, fe fe uh, feminist technologists, and they have a show coming up in New York, and they're just awesome, and I love what they're doing. Um, also at the school, we're really big, big proponents of the use of drawing, of the idea of drawing as a way of making metaphor. So if you think about computation and computers as this sort of like 
crazy tool of abstraction, like all of the layers of abstraction that actually happen when you press a key on your keyboard or you type Google into the browser and you hit return, like there's so many layers that happen. And what's the way of combating abstraction but it is actually drawing and metaphor? Um, and so our, our program, like a lot of what we do is work on paper and, and make drawings, make comic books. Um, and we also do things like we might give a lecture and then um, give the students some dollars. They have to run to the dollar store and then build uh, like a physical description of what we talked about in class. Um, and so it's uh, it, it kind of a beautiful school for, from a standpoint of like trying to create um, artworks and expressions around these concepts. And another important idea of the school is that we try to um, really create a space where we can be together. So um, in, in this space, and this is in the older space, now we're in the old Kickstarter offices in the lower side, but this is in Brooklyn, um, there was this thing called the golden hour. So about 5 p.m. the sun would set, and it just was this beautiful time to be in the space and hanging out and jamming. Um, it's also important for us that we eat together. So um, I had this vision when I went to graduate school. I, had a vision of graduate school that you would be like drinking wine and arguing and like staying up late and you know so we try to create this kind of environment where it's not just about like lectures and homework but actually like cooking and and making things together um we we try to do different things like alternative ways of looking at code or thinking about code. So here's Margaret Hamilton. She's one of the programmers on the, uh, for the Apollo. And this is, she's printed out all of her code. It's almost as tall as she is. Um, we try to do things like that, like print out the code. So here, Sarah Groff Palermo is one of the participants. In the fall, she took uh, like a, a, a program and she printed it out and she wrote on it. And so we do things like the classroom gets full of these like printouts and like drawings and all of this like amazing, random, awesome stuff. Um, this is a project which I really love by Simona De Rosa. She did a, a project called Tasted, and this is essentially, she, she was interested in, in cooking, and if you think about like the pairing of ingredients, when you look at ingredients that you might be cooking, the, um, the different ingredients have, are made of different compounds, and so she found a database of compounds. And then she, uh, fr from that, calculated the computational similarity between different ingredients. So if you take something like chocolate and something like honey, how close are they? And then she created a whole menu that was based on computational similarity or dissimilarity. And it was one of these things where once she asked the question, then all hell broke loose. And um, you know, we were like jamming. Here you can see on the on the uh, wall, like there's like all of the equations that she was thinking about and things like Jacquard. It's, I think it says Boo Jacquard. Um, we're thinking about Jacquard distance and Python. And um, uh, Hir Hiroki is in the room probably. I saw him earlier today. Um, created a uh, programming language completely based on uh, emoji. So here he's, he's defining pi with pizza slices. Um, Toro Yurokawa Yur created a binary card game, and it's actually just a set of playing cards where people create new rules. And so it's open source, and he's got a, a GitHub repo, and people are actually making new games up um, and playing and, and doing these interesting things with this idea of a card game that's, you know, just the card is either black or white. Um, Ish Ishak Bertrand and Jonathan Wall created a project called Talk Talking, which is a conversation between two computers where um, it's essentially uh, two televisions that are showing graphical symbols like circles or squares or triangles and then two cameras. And the camera from one television is trained at the other. And what they did is they, they documented what happens in a normal conversation and then created software that, that actually, like, explains what a conversation is about. And these computers are actually having a conversation. Matt Daniels has been doing some crazy polygon work. Um, Cristo Allegra, this is a um, data visualization where he took stocks, the stocks of different companies and then um, used images of tulips to describe the history of the stock over time. Um, he also did, he took, um, these Chernoff faces, and he took t uh, Tim Cook and um, is using Tim's Cook face to describe Apple stock. Um, this is a project by Andy Clymer, which is called the Insecurity Camera. And this is a camera, a security camera that when you look at it, it looks away. <laughs> uh, 
And it's, it's super fun to be in, you know, around this kind of, uh, even just like this version was, soup, was crazy fun. It's a er early prototypes. Um, and one of the beautiful things about creating a school is actually seeing the schools that come out of it. So um, Paul Chang, who was a participant, created OF Course in New York, and is te you know he's teaching other people. Um, and Rachel Yua created the School of Ma, the School of M Machines Making and M Make Believe, um, that's in Berlin, and they're doing great programs, um, you know, sim similar to what we're doing at F SFBC, but with a whole different um, kind of you know, a whole different crew of teachers and a whole different approach. Um, and it's just been inspiring to actually see how our, our school is leading to these other schools or, um, and so on. This is uh, Oleg pa Pashkovsky um, created this uh, third eye. Um, so I, I suggested that it needed lasers. Um, so that's the next, the next step is adding lasers. Um, and just to talk about how kind of these projects lead to different types of jamming, this is Yuki Yoshida. Um, he had this idea of, of cataloging all of the different ways that you could write code to draw a circle. So he created a whole booklet. Um, and then I sent him uh, like a simple sketch, a simple open framework sketch where it draws a circle by randomly plotting lines from one side to another. Um, and then if it hits the circle, we, draw, we, don't, we don't draw it. Um, and then I just started jamming with that, and a lot of it is kind of this back and forth. So I said, okay, could I write words? What would happen? I tried a smiley face. That didn't work very well. Um, and then let me try actually like putting typography in there and having the lines intersect with the typography. Um, and, and a lot of it has been this kind of like jamming. Um, and the thing is like we're not, we don't have money for a big building. We don't have money for like a fancy facilities. This is what our front door looks like. Um, but that, you know, we're, we, we're, um, we've been in business now for two years and we have a call now for participants in the fall and now we're really becoming like an, an institution. Um, and I don't want to be an institution, I want to be an institute. And so a lot of what I'm thinking about and what we're grappling with is how, how do we become an institute? How do we be an institute? And we're just trying to become like a, a space for, um, good, um, warm, curious people to be in a room together, and that's what I think schools should be. Thank you. Thank you.